um, thank you all for being here. It's an honor to be able to show this film in this place, the IIWC. It's a wonderful venue, and we have a lot in common. And I would also like, I would like to thank Mr. Ram, Ram Prakash for allowing me to use this podium, and Mr. Valish Kaushik, my friend, collaborator on films, translator, co-director, producer. But without his help, I could not have done this beautiful film that you're about to see. I'll just talk a little bit about me. Um, from childhood, I have been an artist. I started out painting and drawing, and then I got into photography, photojournalism, and now I make documentaries about nature. Okay, so how did I get in, involved in um, this world? When I'm painting at home in a little studio, I listen to the radio, and I started to hear every day on the news, starting about 2010 or 2013, every day on the news, there was another species being totally wiped out or brought to the endangered zone. I'd be painting a lot, kind of happy, and then I'd hear, there are only 500 mountain gorillas left in the wild, or uh, three white rhinos left, and they were trying to mate the, the elderly male with his daughter and granddaughter <laughs> until he, um, they had to euthanize him in 2018 or 17. So um, I would hear about this and I'd get really upset and I'd think, what am I doing? And painting in my, my own little studio and I really want to see and love and be involved in the whole world. And then I heard there were only 2,500 tigers left in the wild, in the whole world, only 2,500 wild tigers. And I couldn't stand it. <clears throat> So where could I go to explore this worsening situation? What is India's national animal? Tiger. Tiger. And I was real interested in the tigers because I couldn't believe that people could let tigers and elephants and just all of the majestic large mammals just disappear. So since you're, you have a tiger here, in 2015 I decided to come to India to make a documentary about tiger extinction and its human causes. I discovered Sanctuary Asia's great program, Tiger Kids, Kids for Tigers. Are any of you kids involved in that? No? Oh? Well, anyway, it's um, a really neat program. And I also discovered how ecotourism is working. In 2017, I heard of your unique problems involving village relocation and poaching. So I do this work because I want to help save the world using media, because that's what I can do. I don't have millions of dollars to donate, so I want to t talk to people and learn from them and get the word out. So I can't do this alone, but maybe we can all do it together. And we must begin now, because we have so little time left. I choose your country to focus my lenses on because here is where half of the last wild tigers left on Earth are still living in their natural habitat. Okay, in my research for this introduction, I discovered a similar talk given here by Professor Eric J. Lott in 1986. He was interested in Indian religion and the, its relationship to the sacredness of nature. It is a brilliant account of humanity's potential, but sadly, some things never change. Like in the last 33 years, some things haven't changed since he wrote. And I will just read a few passages of what, that echoed my own concern. From Indian Culture and Earth Care by Eric J. Lott. In many ways, scientists are still rather like children playing with fire. 
We have not mastered nature's mysteries. Even if what we can do to utilize nature's resources is impressive, what nature herself does is far more impressive. If we do not recognize this interact interactiveness with nature, then the manner in which nature will teach us what we truly are will, in the end, be the most impressive of all the phenomena in our cosmic pilgrimage. So, do you feel like nature is teaching us what we are? <coughs> How many people think that we are changing the global climate or global warming? I just want to see a show of hands. How many believe that that's really happening? Just curious. Wow, you're all, <laughs> almost all believers. Um, yeah, that's a, a really sad thing to wake up to every morning, isn't it? But, on a more hopeful note, Mr. Lott, and the reason for my being here, he says, Indian culture expresses an immense fecundity of life values and life attitudes that are, are of the greatest importance to India and to the human race as it is confronted by the present environmental crisis. Okay, buckle up your seatbelts. You will now join my journey from south to north in search of people of the wild tiger. And after the screening, you may ask me questions or join the panel discussion with the Forest Department and other experts. I decided I had to make a film. In 2015, I packed my cameras and flew to Kerala, southern India, where I began my search for India's wild tigers. I made it just in time for the annual Autumn Harvest Festival featuring the Pulakali, a traditional tiger hunting dance. The Pula Kali is an artistic reenactment of the Tiger Festival. Created by soldiers in the Maharaja's army over 200 years ago, it is now popular folk art in South India's harvest parades.
சோலை
In the name of saving wildlife, the Smogia tribe was resettled by the government from the forest onto barren land. By Olona Kia, Jangalat Olona Yekia, Tumara Makan Banwangi, Tumko Nokri Nagangi, Tumko Ese Kardinga, Tumko Rodgar Milega, Oi Rodgar Nimra Vita.
and I was lucky I was there and I saw that cremation. So I found myself very lucky that at the last moment I was there to give my condolences. Because whatever we are today, because of her, because she made her more very famous. I would spend whatever time she would allot me to be with her and There is a thing called silent conversation, and I am sure uh, we participated in uh, this form of silent conversation on many occasions, and I found it very uh, soothing, uh, completely divine. The period of 2004 was a very bad period for the Tabor Tiger Zed. Uh, in the sense that there was a lot of poaching and many tigers had died. And she, at that time, uh, rose to the occasion as to speak, so to speak. And she produced uh, cubs who went on to give more cubs when they became adult. And so far, in my uh, calculation and records, Randhapur Tiger Reserve has about more than 55 tigers belonging directly to Machli and her uh, lineage. In, in true sense, she, she was a majestic uh, queen of the lakes because her territory had uh, three lakes which constituted a very large area. So, I would say she was a karma yogi and a yogi combined in one soul. Absolutely divine. I miss her a lot. I miss my mother a 